Welcome back to another John Giants video on the channel. If you haven't already, like and subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the gaming channel, Fresh Focus. Looking like it's going to be taken down. I don't really know why. YouTube just gave me an email. You got the music channel. It's trying to start up. It's having trouble. You can join our Discord. I'll, I'll have that invite link posted in the description if I remember to post it there. Or I'll blast it on screen if I don't. But essentially, it's called the CIA. We talk about random stuff there. It's literally just a great big dump of everything. That's what. That's you know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make a. I'm gonna make a channel called the Great Big Dump of Everything. We just post random photos. But until then, join the Discord so that can be created. Now let's get into this video. Today we're going to be talking about a lot of things to start the trade deadline and how our season has gone. I haven't really posted that many update videos. Like I said, school starting up again. It's a lot of homework. It's a lot of work. So it's going to be hard to do stuff like that. But from what's going on, we lost two games. One to Dallas, pretty bad, and one to Seattle. So Seattle, we lost 13-27 to to Dallas. Let me look at this again. I'm going to just do a quick Google. Like I said, the Chicago, the Seattle, Seattle, we lost 13 to 27. Dallas, we lost, what did we lose by? 26 to, 23 to 16. So, two score loss against Seattle, one score loss against Dallas, and really we shouldn't have we had a one score loss against Dallas. It should have been two, but we scored last minute, so whatever. Upcoming, we got the Texans and the Lions, 1-5-1 one, and 1-6. One, and and Both teams that really haven't been winning. Lions, I believe, are the number one seed. They're not the number one seed. They're the number one draft pick, number one overall, heading into the seat, heading into the draft next season. I believe the Texans are number two, if I'm not wrong. The Texans are number two. I think the Steelers are number three. I think the Steelers are number three. The Panthers are number four, or that's vice versa. I think the Raiders are number five, and then Broncos, Jags. You know, Jags are number five, and then Raiders are number six. Something like that. Essentially, we've been facing we've been facing low caliber teams, and we're gonna face two more low, really low caliber teams to finish the year. Both coming in the next two weeks, and then we got a we got a bye week before that. But yes, both coming in the next few weeks. The Texans and the Lions, both games we should win. Both games we should really win. And then. Then the season gets tougher. We got two games against Commanders. So we got those two games, Lions-Texans, two against the Commanders, got one against the Colts. That's five games you should probably win. Five games we can win. Five games we probably will win. That's 11-2. And then you got four games we have a tougher time winning. Let's just say that. Dallas, Eagles twice, and then you got the Vikings. All teams that are top of the, that are top of the line... The worst of that pack is six and two, and that's the Cowboys. Then you have six and one Vikings, and you got the seven and zero Eagles. That's what we're dealing with, and that's what we gotta we gotta win one of those games to be looked at for the number one seed. I don't think we're gonna go in the number one seed, especially over teams like the Eagles, the Vikings, and the Cowboys. If we beat all of them, let's say we win out the rest of the season, we just absolutely explode this, go fifteen and two. We're definitely going to be the number one seed. Let's say we split five and four. We're at 11 and six. We probably lost those four games. We're looking at third place finish with a wild card. Not bad. Not bad. The trade deadline, though, I don't know how we'll do if we make it to the wild card. Here's why. The defense, I think, played really well for what they were dealing with. I think the offense was the reason why we lost against Seattle and why we probably won't win in the playoffs now. Here's why. Our receivers. It's no shock. It's no surprise. It's no secret that our receivers really suck. They suck. Our best receiver is looking like Darius Slayton or Marcus Johnson. And our best slot is Wanda Robinson, a rookie who was drafted in the second round. Those are the facts. That's what we got. That's what we got. And it's not good. 
Jones has been playing about as good as anyone can expect, better than expected, if if not better than expected for what he's had. He's played well. He's won games. He's done what he's had been asked. Barkley is is on is on is having a tear this season, coming back to his former glory, going back to his 2018 Rookie of the Year glory, and possibly better. Last last week he didn't have a great game. To be honest, didn't have a good game last week. He did the Seattle homed in. Seattle homed in on the run. He had 2.7 to carry. He had a touchdown. He had 20 for 53 yards, and his longest run was 15 yards. Not a good day for Barkley. They really obviously gave him the rock. Jones was 6 for 20. Breida, I think, had one or two runs. But Jones did not have a good day either. He had 176 yards, 17 for 31. I think that's 55, 54-ish. And a QB rating of 75.9. No touchdowns, no picks. Really not a good game from either side. We obviously, we had more. I'm looking at my computer here, so I'm looking down. We had more time with the ball. We had less first downs, less total yards, less passing yards, less rushing yards. More penalties, more return yards, more fumbles, more turnovers in general. More turnovers, less yards per play, more total plays. The only positive stat against, against Seattle was the penalties and the yards, and we had more penalties, so that's actually negative, if you think about it, and total return yards, and we fumbled twice on returns. So we had worse nets, worse averages, and worse total yard, and worse totals. That's not good, against Seattle at least. This should break down to Seattle, I won't, I'll spare you the breakdown of the last few games I missed. For now, there's Seattle. Here's what I think. Unless they sign some receiver like, I don't know, Odell Beckham. They sign, let me see who's who else. If, they, if a receiver decides, I don't want part of this, if, I don't want part of another organization, and they decide, I'm going to leave, I want to test free agency out early, they leave and they sign them, or if they sign Odell Beckham, I think those are the only options they have at getting at improving their receiving core. They're hoping to get Galladay back by the end of the bye week. After that, I, I I really don't know what other options you have after that. I mean, right now, your options are very grim. Very grim. Because Marcus Johnson and Darius Slayton are your best receivers, and Jones is just... Seattle proved that they can't just win because of willpower. They have to have some skill. They can't just depend on Barkley because they'll hone in on the run if they can't pass. They don't have the check down in Daniel Bellinger anymore, who was, who was actually a really good player for them. He got check down yards when needed. He got touchdowns. He made plays. He had a rushing touchdown. But his eye and his surgery, and I wish him the best. He's gone now. You got your, your best tight end is probably Tanner Hudson or, or Chris Meyer. They make catches whenever they, whenever they throw the ball. Ricky Seals-Jones, I don't know what happened to him. I was hoping he would get some time, but obviously they didn't get time. Tight ends have been better than I expected this year. The receivers have been much worse than expected. I didn't think they were going to be great, but I didn't think they were going to be this bad. Wondell Robinson, I think, is your true best receiver, but he can't be your number one. Your number one is probably Slayton or Marcus Johnson. So, yeah. That's your situation. You got Kenny Galladay. Honestly, hot take. I think he'll be better than he ever was in New York coming into the final stretch of the season. Because now you got a playoff caliber team. He is now truly in that number one role. He's no longer, Shepard's not, Shepard was always the number one target for Jones. Sometimes it was Slayton whenever he was on the field. Then Canarius Tony was usually his number two. Kenny Galladay was always, was never really his number one read. Now you have no choice but to make him your number one read. Now you have no choice. And now they have to depend on him. And I think with that, it'll satisfy his diva needs. And he'll play well. I really don't like him. I don't think anybody likes him in New York right now. It's a big market, whatever. But I think now that he is depended on, he you're gonna have to. You're, he's gonna have to play better because he will play better. Looking forward to the season. I predicted eleven and six for the finish. I predicted six and two or seven and one coming into by the last video that I made. I predicted six and seven and two, six and six, seven and one. Six and two coming into the bye week. I was right. I predict eleven and six, twelve and five, or thirteen and four.
coming in, coming in, finishing the season. I either predict 13 and 4, I think they win the division, 12 and 5, they could win the division with a little luck, 11 and 6, it'd take a lot to win the division at 11 and 6. You could possibly have a bye in the number one seed. I don't think they will. I think they'll play in the playoffs. It is what it is. Now, given that situation, here's why I think Odell is a good sign for them. What you look for... Let me fix this camera angle. What you look for in as a receiver... Move this. What you look for as a receiver in free agency, or even in a trade deadline, is you look for... A team that wants you, a team that you want to go to, a team that you resonate with, a team that has a good system, a good coaching staff, a good running game, good passing game, a good quarterback, a good team with a good defense, with people that you like, with people that you relate to, and maybe even a system that holds a little nostalgia to you. That's what you look for whenever you're leaving a team to go to another team. I feel like the Giants satisfy everyone, even in your playoff contender, if I didn't say that. The Giants satisfy every one of those needs for Odell Beckham, I think. So, I really don't see why it's not a good match. So, so maybe Odell Beckham wants to go to a new roster. Maybe he wants to wait to see who is going to make it to the playoffs and who is not. He's going to go to somebody who's going to make it to the playoffs and he's going to win another ring. Maybe that happens. Maybe he decides, I just want to go to the Giants because I like the Giants. Maybe he decides I want to go to the Rams because I like the Rams. Wherever he goes, I wish him best of luck. But I really hope he goes to the Giants. Because honestly, you're looking at December. You got some games you need to win. You got three games you, you should and need to win if you want to make the playoffs. Two against Washington and one against the Colts. Games you should probably win. Games you should win. Games you can. Games you have to win if you want to make it to the playoffs. Lose those games. That drops your season record from 11-6 and six to like 9-8. and eight, And you're looking at a possible wild card if... You have a sucky team if you have a sucky conference. That's what you're looking at. That's what we need to not do. Looking into December, that's when Odell is expected to come back. Signing a guy like Odell for the final stretch of the season would be crucial. Because if they do sign him and he plays like he did with the Rams in, in their late season, he'll be great. He'll be great. He'll probably be better than he ever was in New York. Hot take. Real hot take. A lot of people may disagree on me. I don't care. But what do you think? You sign OBJ, do we go 11-6? and six? Maybe we sweep, maybe we get swept. Or do we fall flat on our faces? We go 8-9, we 7-10. Go and 10. Maybe we just absolutely fall flat on our faces. Maybe we sweep and go 15-2, 14-3. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. I, I want to hear it from the people for once. Well, that's pretty much it for us. Not really much to say about our season. Didn't have any graphics up today, mostly just the intro. That's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time on the John Giants channel.